All right, strap in, because we are going deep on Hierocles of Alexandria. A fascinating figure. Yeah, and, you know, I love a good philosophical mystery, mm -hmm. and the stuff you sent over on him has me totally intrigued. Well, get ready for some twists, because there were actually two Hierocles in Alexandria back then. Oh, really? Yeah, we are talking about the Neoplatonist one, though, a real heavyweight in the world of ideas. Neoplatonism. Okay, so for those of us who maybe haven't been to a philosophy symposium in a minute, um, of course. Can you give us the, the crash course? Yeah. So imagine you're going back to the teachings of Plato, right? The OG. Right. Right back to the classics. The classics. But then you're adding like your own unique spin on things. That's Neoplatonism in a nutshell. Okay. They were really into this idea of like this ultimate source of goodness and beauty called the one. Okay. And they were all about trying to reconnect with it to return to that source. So like Plato 2.0 basically. Exactly. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, it's building right. on those foundations. Okay, and Alexandria is not a bad place to be a philosopher, right? Oh no, not at all. Like that was the place to be. This is like the happening spot. Yeah. Think Library of Alexandria, right? right? constant debate philosophers from all different schools like bumping into each other on the street corner like the philosophical coliseum or something like that. exactly yeah duking it out with ideas yeah so heracles walks into this intellectual mosh pit what's what's his deal what's his claim to fame okay so he is best known for this commentary that he wrote on the golden words okay which are this collection of teachings from pythagoras himself oh wow so imagine trying to like decode the wisdom of these like ancient verses yeah that's what heracles did okay when we say golden words are we talking like tablets are we talking scrolls what's the what's the deal here yeah so think of them more like ethical guidelines or like proverbs okay that were attributed to pythagoras so okay. things like above all else revere yourself Ooh. or let not sleep fall upon thy eyes before thou hast thrice reviewed the transactions of the past day okay so like really pithy statements Yes, exactly. Yeah. Short, but packed with meaning. Okay. And so Heracles comes along and he's like, I'm going to unpack these and really reveal the, like the philosophical depths. Okay. So how does he, how does he even approach that? Like what's his method? Well, he brings his Neoplatonist lens to it, of course. Okay. So for example, right, he takes that revere yourself and he interprets it as this call to respect the divine spark within each of us. Okay. Like that connection to the one that's at the heart of Neoplatonism. So he's not just explaining the words, he's like ex extrapolating out this entire worldview. Exactly, he's showing you the connections to this larger philosophical system. Wow, okay, so we've got this brilliant mind, but you mentioned earlier that he was influenced by other thinkers as well. Oh, absolutely. So who else are we talking about? So besides his commentary on the golden words, we also have these fragments from another work of his called On Providence. Okay. Sadly, most of it is lost to history. Oh man, that's so frustrating. I know, it's like finding a treasure chest. Yeah. With just like a couple jewels left. With like a little bit of glitter at the bottom. Exactly, and you're like, what else was here? Right, what were the other riches? Exactly. But those jewels that we do have are pretty incredible. Okay, so what do we have? In these fragments, we see Hierocles like weaving together these ideas from Plato, Aristotle, even the Stoics. Oh, wow. He wasn't afraid to blend different philosophical perspectives yeah. to try to get this like fuller understanding of the universe and humanity's place in it. That's so cool. I love that he's like a philosophical DJ, just yeah. like taking all these different schools of thought, remixing them together. I love that analogy. So if so much of his work is lost though, why should we even care about Hierocles today? That's a great question. I think <sighs> his story is this really powerful reminder that even in these fragments, even when we don't have the complete picture, yeah. there are these hidden depths to uncover. Okay. He challenges us to make those connections, to find those like aha moments where different schools of thought, they kind of come together in this unexpected way. He's left us a philosophical puzzle. He had we might not have all the pieces, but the ones we do have like you said, are pretty incredible and offer this really fascinating glimpse into this brilliant mind. Absolutely. Well, thank you for helping to, you know, illuminate some of these fragments for us. It's my pleasure. And guiding us through this uh, deep dive into Heracles. Always them drop it in the verse. Stoic mindset, let the lessons disperse. All cruelty springs from weakness, that's the start. In the face of strength, let the passion impart. Enjoy present pleasures with a foresight gaze. Balance the now, don't let the future waste. Yeah, he who is brave is free. The courage we find, the shackles of fear we leave behind. Cynical flow, virtue gain profound. Stoicism, deep wisdom all around. Uh, 
Stoic vibes in every line In the quotes of life, let the lessons shine The animal is feeling that thing The track right there don't suffer more than needed, cynic are clear. Face the storm when it comes, don't be scared How does it help to be more? The strife In the rhythm of life, don't seek out strife It is not the man who has too little but craves True wealth and contentment, not what enslaves Yeah, let us say what we feel, let speech be true Harmonize with life and everything you do uh, cynical flow, virtue game profound Stoicism, deep wisdom all around uh, Stoic vibes in every line In the quotes of life, let the lesson shine In the passage of time, find the fountain of youth While we wait for life Life passes by, seize the moment, spread your wings, let your spirit fly. Cynical flow, virtue game profound Stoicism, deep wisdom all around uh, Stoic vibes in every line In the quotes of life, let the lessons shine Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity Seneca dropping gems unlocking unity yeah. The greatest blessings within us and within our reach Content with the lot, lessons of wisdom preach True happiness is to enjoy the present so true Without anxious dependence, let the joy accrue Wherever there's a human being, be kind In the threads of compassion, unity bind Cynical flow, virtue game profound Stoicism, deep wisdom all around uh, Stoic vibes, in every line In the quotes of life, let the lessons shine Cynical wisdom, echoes in the rhyme Stoic rap anthem, standing the test of time In the echoes of ancient philosophy Seneca's lessons God set your soul free. You turned around and you lost your money, lost your car, had no place to stay, sleeping in people's houses, on the floor, on their couch. How do you do that? How do you handle the times when you were borrowing money and couldn't pay it back? You felt humiliated. When people you love who didn't believe in you and told you you ain't nothing. How'd you fight that inner conversation? How do you keep on coming back again and again? You don't know what has happened to me when your life has been destroyed with drugs or alcohol or you've lost your business or lost your job or lost your home and you've been completely devastated. How do you come back? How can you tell me that there's a possibility I can come back? Oh, let me tell you something. All I want you to think about whatever you want to do, whatever goal you have, whatever dream you have, it's to reclaim your health. It's to have your own business, to have another job, to earn more money, to have a better life, to travel around the world, to help out children, to make the environment better, whatever it is. Here's what I want you to stand on this, this one statement, on this benchmark. Just say to yourself, it's possible. See, if I'd said five years ago, I'm going to make five years from now, one million dollars in one year, and I hadn't made $10,000. My mind would say, that's impossible. Come on. So I think the reason that most people don't reach their goals and many of the people that started out with me that gave up and stopped and they became frustrated, they said, I can do it. I'm not asking you to say, I can do it. No, don't say that. No, no. I don't even want you to believe you can do it. No, no. That's not a requirement. All you need to do to get out in the arena of life is to say, it's possible. How many of you know people who moan and groan and complain about life all the time, all right? They might moan and groan about their job. I'm sick of this job. I'm sick of you. And they just moan and groan and complain all the time and never do anything about it. They haven't got to the point where they're sick and tired of being sick. And you will never remember the days and nights you stay home and do nothing. Who brings you the most peace should get the most time. If you are ever tempted to look for outside approval, realize that you have compromised your integrity. Epictetus Sometimes it's a blessing to not get what you want. Never forget that the only person that cares about your hopes and dreams is you.
The only person that is going to make them happen is you. Gratitude is the mother of all qualities. Jay Shetty He that hath not won in the self-same general end always as long as he liveth cannot possibly be won and the self-same man always. But this will not suffice except thou add also what ought to be this general end. For as the general conceit and apprehension of all those things which upon no certain ground are by the greater part of men deemed good cannot be uniform and agreeable, but that only which is limited and restrained by some certain proprieties and conditions, as of community, that nothing be conceived good, which is not commonly and publicly good, so must the end also that we propose unto ourselves be common and sociable. For he that doth direct all his own private motions and purposes to that end, all his actions will be agreeable and uniform, and by that means will be still the same man. I neglect stack up on me so that I will have the sorry scenario six years from now giving some excuse instead of celebrating my progress. That's the key to discipline. Okay? Let's get kids involved in the least of disciplines. One more and then one more and then another one and then another one and then some more. And the first thing you know, you're starting to weave the tapestry of a disciplined life into which you can pour more wisdom and more attitude and more strong feeling, more faith and more courage. Now you've got something, a vessel in which to put it. And now the equities start to flow. And the early return, I'm telling you, if you'll start this process, the early return will have you so excited. You'll commit yourself to this strategy for the rest of your life. You'll never go back to the old ways. Join a new crowd. Join a new group. The discipline's to do it. Take action. Now here's the other side of discipline. If there's considerable time that passes between the moment of awareness and the time of our implementation, then that is called procrastination. Procrastination. Doing it tomorrow instead of today. Procrastination. An almost exact opposite of discipline. The voice within us says, get it done. Discipline then says, do it now. Do it to the best of your ability, today. Tomorrow and always, until finally, the worthy deed becomes instinctive. Procrastination says later, tomorrow, whenever I get a chance. Procrastination also says, do what is necessary to get by or to impress others. Do what you can, but not what you must. In every circumstance we face, we are constantly presented with these two choices. Do it now or do it later. Discipline and procrastination. A choice between a disciplined existence... Bearing... People don't get what they deserve. What can happen at any time can happen today. The best way to overcome the suffering of life is to stop clinging to the things of life. Buddha. Expect nothing. Appreciate everything. Courage is not having the strength to go on. It is going on when you don't have the strength. You are the master of your own destiny, Neville Goddard. Do nothing against thy will, nor contrary to the community, nor without due examination, nor with reluctancy. Affect not to set out thy thoughts with curious neat language. Be neither a great talker, nor a great undertaker. Moreover, let thy God that is in thee to rule over thee, find by thee that he hath to do with a man, an aged man, a sociable man, a Roman, a prince, one that hath ordered his life as one that expecteth, as it were, nothing but the sound of the trumpet, sounding a retreat to depart out of this life with all expedition, one who for his word or actions neither needs an oath, nor any man to be a witness. 
to keep thine eye single so you can align yourself and get ready to win, to create the next greatest version of yourself. I reinvented myself. You can reinvent yourself. Start asking yourself, what is it? What talents, what gifts, what miracle working power in me I haven't called on yet? Greater is he as in you than he that's in the world. You got miracle working power. You're here for a reason. You've been chosen. You've been picked out to be picked on because you have miracle working power in you. There's something in you the world needs. You are going down the wrong path. And so, you know what? There's been an intervention. There's been a disruption. Say, oh, no, 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 no. I got something else for you that's bigger and better than that. And so, listen, I went from the Miami Sanitation Department working for Sears as a salesman, selling television sets door to door, being a disc jockey, a community activist, a state legislator, and now a voice of transformation around the world. Are you kidding me? What a mighty God we serve. I'm here because of his grace and mercy. And so are you. Don't forget it. You're no accident. You got to become defiant. This thing called life, it's about a fight. There are a lot of people who are talking about all the people dying from a coronavirus. Guess what? There are far more people that are living like my daughter Serena, like my son-in-law Will. And they've been fighting and they are winning. Life is a fight for territory. And once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. I want you to write this down. Think about something that you want to do in your personal life, in your professional life, in your health, in your relationships. Who is it that you don't need to deal with, be in relationship with, communicate? You need to stop the habit of doubting yourself. Sometimes your circle...